I grew up in Kailicha, Cape Town, which is the townships of Cape Town. It influenced me a lot because a lot of the collections that I create are usually me drawing from my life story, connecting the collections to people just moving around the township, the vibes, the people, the creativity. I was born in Johannesburg and basically born and bred there. I only moved to Cape Town three years ago. It doesn't matter where I am, I've just always been intrigued by different and weird things in life and sketching them out and I kind of found fashion as a way Way to take that to a tangible state. I grew up in a township called Soweto in Johannesburg. The streets of Soweto are lively and if you look at the apartheid era, you used to see the Pantula dancers, hip-hop dancers all laced out in the streets. I've been doing a lot of the African continent for the past few years now. It's a different kind of grounding experience. You can understand why people when they come to Africa they would do that. In 2007, I came back to Cape Town on a job actually. I'd been before but I'd never lived here and stayed for a two-week vacation and that was nine years ago. Not the international market always considered Africa to have giraffes in its backyard and everybody's hungry. There's lots of stereotypes about Africa. It's very important to tell that story in a modern way because we want African fashion to be able to stand next to Europe fashion and British fashion. It's important to build that modern African identity and to break the stereotypes that were once built on print and so forth. It's so much more than that and so much more in depth. There is this interest in Africa at the moment because our culture is so deep and finally we are overcoming the previous disposition of we're not good enough to compete. The industry is starting out so it's kind of getting to write its own rules. We get to kind of figure out our own rhythm and our own model. We've also been so far out of being influenced by Europe and America that we've had to create our own identity in essence and be more insular and be inspired within the country than looking for things outside. What I really think that stands out is the fact that there's a lot of creativity. Within South Africa alone we've got a lot of cultures and those are portrayed through fashion that we display as South Africans. We have a bunch of young African designers that are all combining together to build a new identity of African fashion, a modern one and more like a true identity in order to break stereotypes that are out there. Ubuntu really ties into what I was saying earlier about the concept of unity and oneness and helping those around you and uplifting others as opposed to standing on people to get ahead. It's the heart, it's the spirit of, of Africa. It really just is that opportunity to reach out and to take hands and to be supportive of each other. I would say South African fashion is unexpected, diverse, culture-based. Diverse, vibrant and innovative. Creativity, heritage and color. Embryonic. Stylish. Flavor. Loud, honest, Authentic, pioneering, passion. When I said passion, it's about that vibrancy, it's about the energy and the dynamic. I like the immediacy of fashion. And every now and then you get to work with the right kind of designer and you get to create a concept that's usually quite simple but then quite poetic and resonates with people. You can actually feel a response to it. It's like a fashion moment. I love those. I decided to be part of the project because I believe in a lot of our South African designers. They inspire designs all put together in wide editorial. How can I not? One of my newly found favorites, Genevieve Lyons. You can see a few snippets over here in the background. Get yourself one, don't get yourself one, your loss will be don't get yourself one. The motto of the brand is intricate aesthetically devised apparel. So it's about taking avant-garde ideals and kind of merging it into something that's a bit more wearable, a bit more understanding to the consumer. Speaking to a consumer who's into quality apparel, also into wanting something unique and different. It's also about telling parables within fashion. Mokwe loves a person as someone who is confident in who they are, a person who pays attention to detail, but isn't attracted to things based on the embellishment. I'm inspired by menswear, but my muses are more women than men. I take 
from women's wear and I kind of adapted into men's wear. It's also a combination of Japanese aesthetics. I love the idea of minimalism. I love the idea of serenity and peace being depicted in clothing. I actually started to be an accountant. I always saw fashion as something that imprinted on me. Like I chose my, my path in life, but fashion chose me. Imprint comes from that in a sense and also looking at the fact that I work a lot with color. I work a lot with prints. So whatever I create, it always leaves a mark. It's imprint, fashion that imprinted on me, then the products that I produce leave an impression on you. I always play around with gender fluidity. The best way to define my aesthetic or what I focus on is Afro-futuristic because I take a lot from who we are as African. I always pride myself as a storyteller. My women's wear brand expresses a modern language of clothing through the use of carefully considered design and underlying minimal approach. Clean lines, soft tailoring, and refined silhouettes articulate a chic, modern attitude. We reflect a balanced sense of timeless elegance and current intuitive design. What's made me decide to move from mechanical engineering to fashion industry? It's more of a passion. A uh, bespoke suit is not just about making something that looks nice. It's really about making the person who wears it feel their best. And making a suit for somebody is really an opportunity to instill confidence, to bring someone out of a shell, out of a possible insecurity, make them happy. And even though it's a very transitory source of happiness, it still is like a catalyst for something more. African Swiss men wears his heritage on his shoulders. He likes clothes that tell a story, clothes that portray his identity. And a mixture between vintage and straight by, but completely high-end and almost full couture, so to speak. We are reclaiming whatever was taken from Africa and saying we have a story, we have the prototype, we can tell it our way because we can't let the Westerners always tell the world how Africa is. There's a reason why we chose denim as well and the African Swiss because if you look at the black people, the African people, the genes and the fibers that run through our blood, are, they are quite strong, they are quite resilient and resistant. And if you look at denim, the fibers that make denim, if you take denim and you find it for quite a while, the beauty of denim is in its refinement. The more you refine denim, the more you treat it, the more aesthetic, the more beautiful it becomes. So is the black soul as well. The more we refine under appropriate areas, under the slavery on, and then all that has happened in the past, the more our character came out, the more our glory came out. I still get quite inspired by a designer like Suzanne Haynes. I mean, the way Suzanne's mind works is just... I maintain it that when, when they write a book on the history of South African fashion, under S will be Suzanne Haynes, and you need no more. I said, I, I don't like fashion. For me, it's about innovation. So taking artistry and making them into um, wearable sculptures or in human form. Instead of looking at art and then being inspired by that, I decided let me be the artist that then causes the inspiration. Each collection is inspired by something completely different. So sometimes you start at the end or you start at the beginning where it's not. Believe that you have to completely reinvent the wheel. You can, all the time. African style story really reflects the African side that I want to incorporate in each collection. For me, it has a really special meaning because it's a story that I want to tell. Elegance is one of the most important things combined with sophistication, but always at the same time to be versatile and to be easygoing and comfortable. Clothing, it's about the constant journey that we all go through. My brand tells a different story, but it's a modernized story, it's a transhumanist story. Afrofuturism, each connection tracks us back to a place of discomfort, only to allow us to apologize with that discomfort and then find a place of satisfaction. 
when we look at Africans, we have come from such awkward discomfort and now we're trying to redirect it by placing ourselves into a place of satisfaction. And that is what Pilgrim tries to do. It wants the Africans to be okay with that history. Not okay to allow it to happen again, but okay to allow us to see what the future possibilities look like. And if it can do that through redefining the way you consider what dress does as a language and how that language then personifies in a new direction, I've accomplished my goal. The Naked Ape, which is the book by Desmond Morris, I saw this book in a second-hand bookstore and not knowing that years later it will actually manifest into an actual clothing brand. His evolutionary look at man, we take it and we, we take an evolutionary approach to wardrobe. For us, evolution also has a very strong eco-concept in our world. And eco is not just us working with natural fabrics only and fabrics that are biodegradable. We've adopted an attitude that wardrobe needs to be economical, meaning that we don't want to sell you heaps and heaps of the same thing. We want to sell you what you need, your basics, quality over quantity. For me, Africa, the continent as a whole, has an amazing energy that nowhere else in the world has. It has warmth and, and humanity that nowhere else in the world has. It's our narrative to, to put it in words because it's such a visual impact. When I look at our, our unique aesthetic, there's a vibrancy to it. It's not so trends driven, it's more kind of really delving into your history because our country is so vibrant and it's so bold and it's so strong. It sits in your being and if you allow that voice to speak to you, it will be transferred into the designs. It's raw, colourful and unique. Contemporary, fresh and uplifting. New, fresh, bold, brave, boundless. Vibrant, diverse, unapologetic. Bomb dot spot. Where we're realising, look at what we've got. Now come and fly with us, kind of thing, you know. Come and see, come and look.